Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Joe Smith here. And now for the news. Brooks Skyler Richardson, high school cheerleader um, from Ohio. Joe Smith saw something about this online a couple weeks ago, but thought it had already been all settled, everything, or didn't read up on whatever came about it. But Joe Smith just saw here this afternoon now that it was actually in court currently and the verdict was read today but this uh, young girl she this happened two years ago she's 20 now but days after a prom when she was high school senior 18 years old uh, she gave birth to a baby she claimed the baby was stillborn and didn't have the umbilical cord attached when the baby was born and the baby was dead and that she um, buried the baby in their the family garden out back behind their house. In the process of burying the baby in the garden out back she took a large rock and crushed the baby's skull for apparently no apparent reason according to this girl. And and this was one of the facts of the case here. Later that day, or the next day, she's working out at the gym, taking uh, selfies, sending pictures to her mom, lifting her shirt up, showing her bare belly, saying, look, mom, my, my belly's coming back already. I, I'm getting skinny again. I can still be a skinny cheerleader, stuff like that. Acting like, and she's saying she's so happy that she got her skinny belly back so fast. You know, some, a mother that just gave birth to a baby the day before or earlier that day, going to the gym, texting pictures of her naked belly, and saying how happy she is that it's getting all skinny again. And that she's returning to her old, her old figure so fast and acting all joyful. That, that doesn't really sound like someone that just gave birth to a dead baby. The prosecutors argue that she gave birth to a live baby. She took a large stone, crushed the skull, and the skull was crushed in. When the baby was born alive or dead, the skull was crushed, crushed in with large rock or, or bl large blunt object, sledgehammer or something. They, they said rock in the article. So, why would a mother that gave birth to a dead baby take a rock and smash the dead baby's skull in and bury it in the garden? And then go start working out of the gym and start texting selfies. If this was some sort of trage tragedy or that misfortune. You think they'd be calling like the hospital or the, the doctors or whatever. And she gave birth at home or where she never went to the doctors or any, anything like that to get any uh, uh, pregnancy care. Uh, she kept this like a big secret. Well, and what Joe Smith thinks is one of the biggest What do you call it? the justice? Our justice system not working properly, or or jurors being overwhelmed by sad sob stories instead of the facts or something. But today, twelve jurors hand down unanimous verdict: not guilty. 
on murder charge, not guilty on manslaughter charge, not guilty on endangering the welfare of a child, but guilty on the fourth and least charge of them all, abusing a corpse. She was charged with abusing a corpse because she she claimed the baby was already dead when she smashed a baby's head in with a rock. Her baby's head in with the rock. Her dead baby's head in with the rock. So, she'll probably do like two weeks in jail with Felicity Huffman here and they'll probably do a YouTube channel about their little stint in prison and write a book about her or something or other and make a few million dollars and and everyone will go back to their happy selves. But yes, in other news, uh, Felicity Huffman is going to do jail time. Sounds like only about 14 days old. So, same thing as speeding and running from the police. Actually, you probably get more from speeding and running from the police. Other news, Purdue Pharma. Uh, look at filing bankruptcy, facing lawsuits and charges for fueling the opiate crisis in America by making oxycodone. However, it sounds like none of the doctors that prescribed it are going facing charges, so... It's just a drug maker that... That makes a drug that's going to face charges. The dealers aren't. And whether or not the company should even face charges, Will Smith's kind of um, pondering that. Um, they made a profit that the FDA allowed sale on the market. It was the doctors that prescribed it, and probably the doctors that over-prescribed it sometimes. There's people that are writing fake prescriptions or getting legit prescriptions and then selling it on the streets. So Smith's not quite sure why Purdue Farm Pharma should take the be the only one to take a hit on this and be the only one to get punished. In fact, Joel Smith starting to think that maybe Purdue Pharma is the only one that shouldn't get punished. Well you punish the FDA for Allow it to be prescribed and sold. When you punish the doctors for over prescribing it, when a patient comes in and say, Well, I'll, I'll pay your visitation fee if you renew my prescription, the doctor is like, Okay, here's your new prescription. And, and two minutes later, the doctor walks out the door. On to the next patient, on to the next prescription. You've been to doctors before. You know what it's like. It 
It's all about what kind of prescriptions can they write. Because they get kickbacks on those prescriptions. <clears throat> so the way it looks, Purdue Pharma is the only one that's actually following the law here. Those doctors that were writing prescriptions that they shouldn't. Those patients that was selling it illegally on the market after they got a prescription for it. Or used it more than what they should have used. It's the FDA that allowed it to be on the market in the first place. That said it was safe. What's your thoughts? Should Purdue Pharma get fined or in trouble or punished or criminal charges or whatever for manufacturing a, a medicine or a drug, a pharmaceutical, that the FDA, the government agency, said that they could, that it was safe. So something happened in the FDA for allowing it and allowing it to be sold and manufactured. FDA could have stopped at any time. FDA never had grant it in the first place. Could have said, well, we don't think this is going to be safe or too addictive or too many people overdosing and dying. They could have banned it from the get-go and never would have been made. So... The only reason why it's on the market is the FDA said yes. What well, about all the doctors that wrote the prescriptions? Especially the ones that probably shouldn't have. Or gave more refills than they should have after maybe maybe the patient was in a car accident or something and had legit reason to take it for three days or four days or something like that, but then the doctor wrote them like a three month refill. And what's your take on the uh, college scandal, college admission scandal with uh, the Full House woman and the Felicity Huffman? You think two weeks is enough time? You're doing jail for this? Other people that are actually qualified and should have been, they're lost out on their hopes and dreams. And the cheerleader girl, you think that's normal for a grieving mother that just gave birth to a dead baby to help cope with the grief of giving birth to the dead baby, take a large rock and bash her baby's face in? Or you think that was should have been an obvious telltale sign that the baby was alive and, and this kid murdered it? Well, that's it for today's news. Happy Friday the 13th. Joel Smith signing out.